so we have talked about input output linearization uh, we continue that discussion uh, we demonstrate the whole process with uh, two more examples uh, the first example is uh, this uh, nonlinear system with uh, the output equation y equal to x3 and we want to obtain an input output linearization you remember the pre procedure first we need uh, first we check whether the internal dynamics are stable or not uh, for that purpose we find the internal dynamics uh, the procedure you already remember you set the output to be identically equal to zero uh, that means x3 is identically equal to zero if x3 is identically zero its derivative will also be uh, identically equal to zero x3 dot equal to zero uh, here it implies that x2 is also identically equal to 0 and x2 dot uh, is therefore identically 0 uh, here x2 dot is identically 0 since uh, x2 is also 0 uh, so this term is 0 this term is 0 the left hand side is 0 therefore u is also equal to 0 and hence from the first equation uh, we get uh, uh, this uh, relation uh, x1 dot is equal to minus x1 from this uh, expression so these are uh, the zero dynamics and uh, zero dynamics the origin of zero dynamics is asymptotically stable hence uh, the input output linearization will be useful to us uh, next uh, step is to find the relative degree so relative degree can be easily found uh, by taking the derivative of the output equation uh, because uh, no control input directly appears over here so we take its derivative y dot is equal to x3 dot which is equal to 2x2 again no control input over here we need to take its second derivative which is written over here therefore relative degree of this system is equal to 2 uh, in the entire state space and once we know the relative degree the transformation uh, uh, is given by this uh, expression uh, h of x is uh, already known lf h of x can be easily found and uh, we have already learned the procedure to find this uh, phi of x uh, so lf h of x is partial h over partial x into uh, f of x this comes out to be equal to 2x2 therefore the transformation is uh, here the h of x is equal to x3 uh, this we have found 2x2 phi1 uh, should satisfy this condition that is partial phi1 over partial x into g it should be equal to 0 and uh, that means this thing which uh, is rearranged to write into this form uh, this term multiplied by this and this term multiplied by this this should be equal to 0 that is over here and now we have this partial differential equation we want to find the solution of this partial differential equation and that solution uh, will uh, determine this phi 1 of x so we again proceed in the same way as we did in the uh, previous examples that is all the terms which involve x2 we bring those terms to the right hand side and uh, this term uh, is retained over here right here it should be e raised to the power minus 2x2 uh, so here is uh, some uh, typing mistake and uh, then uh, what we do we substitute this thing to be equal to some constant let's say equal to 1 so if uh, this is equal to 1 and then then finding the solution of uh, this uh, differential equation is simple uh, bring it to the right hand side and take the integral of both sides that gives uh, us this thing phi 1 of x is equal to x1 plus some constant of integration constant with respect to x1 it can be function of x2 and x3 but it should be uh, should not be function of uh, x1 uh, with this uh, assumption this right hand side uh, becomes this thing again here is uh, my uh, the exponential is minus 2x2 uh, we um, rewrite it uh, here this uh, typo is uh, propagating you take the integral uh, of both both sides 
and uh, uh, because this is actually plus uh, 2 so its integral is uh, divided by plus 2 this term divided by plus 2 so that 2 is cancelled with this one so you have uh, this int integration and this is constant of integration which can be function of x1 and x3 so you have uh, 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 this uh, solution to this differential equation and over here this one uh, you collect the information contained in both of these uh, expressions to finally determine uh, phi 1 of x so here this constant uh, a constant may be taken to be equal to x1 and likewise if we look at this expression this constant uh, can be taken to be this term so you have uh, this solution and uh, remember that solution to partial differential equations is not unique you can have multiple solutions uh, this is one solution you could have chosen some other solution uh, and uh, for example here is uh, another solution uh, phi 1 of x is equal to x1 minus e raised to the power 2x2 plus 1 so you have this solution you can verify if you substitute this thing uh, into this partial differential equation it will be satisfied this is also a solution uh, it will also satisfy this partial differential equation uh, both of them can be utilized however this uh, particular solution has uh, one advantage if you substitute phi of 0 what do we get over here phi of 0 comes out to be equal to 0 so this uh, is 0 e raised to the power 0 is uh, this term is minus 1 so here is plus 1 uh, here phi of 0 is not equal to 0 and here phi of 0 is equal to 0 so you can take uh, this uh, phi 1 you can also take this phi 1 uh, th this has additional advantage that is the equilibrium point of the new system will be uh, at origin uh, with this particular case equilibrium point of uh, the system in new state variables uh, that will be at origin you can have multiple transformations and we know that transformations shift the equilibrium point and uh, if uh, we take this uh, transformation with phi 1 phi of 0 equal to 0 uh, this transformation will result into equilibrium point of system in new coordinates at origin So let's take uh, this uh, transformation and uh, we also need to check whether it is a diffeomorphism or not. Uh, we check whether inverse transformation exists or not. So inverse transformation can be easily found. It exists and it is also smooth. Smooth means we can find the derivative of uh, uh, these things. Uh, derivative of this transformation as well as that of inverse transformation exists. Hence, uh, this transformation is a diffeomorphism. You can also check it by following this approach. You take the partial derivative of t with respect to x. Uh, it comes out to be this thing. Uh, you see that this matrix is full rank. It is non-singular. Hence, this transformation is a uh, th this transformation is a diffeomorphism. And rank of this matrix is equal to three for any x for all x in three-dimensional space. Therefore, uh, this transformation is diffeomorphism in the entire state space. Once we have this transformation, then the uh, rest of the procedure uh, is uh, very simple. Uh, eta dot uh, from this uh, expression uh, is equal to, is given by this thing. And after substitution of uh, x1 dot and x2 dot, we have this uh, expression which can be rearranged to write into this particular form so uh, you can even write uh, this uh, expression in uh, new state variables by replacing x1 x2 uh, with new state variables uh, so if we do that uh, we have uh, this uh, expression and uh, this uh, these are basically the internal dynamics xi1 will automatically come out to be equal to xi2 
you can also verify it and z2 dot uh, will come out to z2 dot is equal to z2 is there some mistake z2 dot uh, z2 dot is equal to 2x2 dot and uh, maybe I have uh, right uh, so there is some again you are right here is uh, some uh, mistake z2 dot uh, uh, this is basically this should be z2 dot here uh, this is again a typo z2 dot is equal to 2x2 dot z2 is 2x2 so its derivative is over here and then x2 dot is replaced uh, over here uh, this typo is again here so it should be z1 dot is equal to z2 and this should be z2 dot equal to this expression and uh, the output in new state variables it is equal to z1 so we have uh, this uh, uh, system in normal form and once we have this system in normal form we can obtain input output linearization by definition of the control input if we take uh, this control input to cancel out these nonlinear terms so that will result into this uh, uh, system z1 dot is equal to z2 and z2 uh, dot, uh, dot is equal to y this is again by mistake and the output equation y is equal to z1 so you have uh, input output linearized system and uh, here are the internal dynamics we have already checked uh, that internal dynamics are uh, the uh, equilibrium point uh, of internal dynamics is asymptotically stable you can even check it uh, in new uh, state variables as well by substituting z1 uh, and z2 equal to 0 so these uh, this expression is written over here so these internal dy zero dynamics are uh, equilibrium point of zero dynamics is asymptotically stable and uh, then uh, you can solve the uh, stabilization problem as well as tracking problem for this particular nonlinear system. So is that clear? Uh, we have uh, one more example over here. We have this nonlinear system. Uh, before performing the input output linearization, we need to check the uh, zero dynamics. Uh, and now this is, these uh, steps are at uh, your fingertips you substitute the output to be identically equal to 0 x3 equal to 0 uh, means 3 dot equal to 0 x3 dot equal to 0 means uh, x1 equal to x1 equal to u so x1 equal to u and uh, then that x1 equal to u substituted over here you have uh, these uh, equations x1 dot equal to minus x1 plus x2 because x3 is 0 and here uh, this term disappears because x3 is equal to 0 minus x2 and what is u x1. u is equal to x1 so these uh, two equations describe the uh, internal di zero dynamics of this system and uh, now uh, the zero dynamics consist of two state equations so we can check the stability of these zero dynamics uh, it is uh, fortunately a linear system and checking the stability of a linear system is easier uh, we can write uh, the system matrix uh, we can rewrite uh, this uh, these state equations into this particular form uh, and we have this system matrix what are eigenvalues of this system matrix uh, this has two eigenvalues one is at origin and uh, the second eigenvalue is at minus 2 so although these zero dynamics are stable but these are not asymptotically stable since these are not asymptotically stable therefore uh, the input output linearized system even if we solve the stabilization problem for input output linearized system we cannot ensure the stability of internal dynamics uh, therefore performing input output linearization will not be useful and hence uh, we do not uh, find the input output linearization of this particular system.